Hey guys, how are you doing? My name is Toto and I'm here with Joysticks. And today we're going to talk about the top five lineups for the Runeterra Last Chance Qualifier. The Last Chance Qualifier, as the name says, is the last chance for you to grab your world spot. First place and second place get the two spots available for this tournament. Um, and Worlds is on December, so this is your last chance, which is why we pre decided to prepare for you five of lineups for standard since we were playing Eternal so far. Let's go right into it. The first lineup is the most popular one. Those were the three decks that people are playing the most and I think is the strongest uh, three decks in the format right now. It's Jananila, Jax Orn and Seraphine Set and Karma. All these three archetypes are already very popular, very familiar. They are very old uh, with some or some one or two cards here and there that changed, but nothing major. So let's see the first lineup, which is Jananila. First deck, Jananila. It's the same deck you've always seen, but it has now called, called Shot and some proportions for the burn spells were changed. Also, we have Tidal Invocation, which is a card that can control very well the small units your opponent have, and also it's a very good card for the mirror matches. But in general, it's the same uh, archetype you've been playing since the season started. So if you're comfortable with this archetype, I recommend you just play it. Despite this archetype being the, not the best in the Eternal format, in the standard, uh, it's pretty much the strongest one. I think this deck's kind of broken in the standard format. And I, I think you should play this uh, deck in the Eternal, in the Open, sorry, or ban it if you want to do well in the tournament. <laughs> now let's get to the elephant in the room, Jax Orn. This is the same list as you've seen in Standard, in Eternal, in your mother's house, in the bathroom. Uh, everywhere. Everywhere you've seen this list. It's the same list we've always seen. I will just say that if you want to bring Barry to the Nice, I would take out personally, I would take out favorite artisan. Yeah, this list is the actual champion for the Eternal format and the deck doesn't change a lot for the standard, so I guess it's very strong in the external also and very popular, okay? Sherzis is also a card that is very good against mirror matches and sometimes wins you a lot of games, okay? You can also add harsh wins if you like. So these are the two card options that you can add if you feel like you want some more control over the board. It's harsh wins and very nice, and you can exchange, I think, favorite artisan and share these or Plutonian Castle. The last one for the most popular decks is the Seta Set and Karma. This is the archetype that pretty much is a single tone Highlander kind of deck uh, focused on the catastrophe unit, the 30 30 overwhelm and it's one of the most popular because Yonia is very good against Jax Orn and also Pluto Verinzal is a very good spot in the meta but it's a more aggressive kind of style deck for this karma set uh, archetype yeah it's a bit more combo so you're gonna be playing trying to uh, fulfill your requirement for the pursuit of perfection uh, just as a reminder, this was created by the current Eternal Champion Aikado. He was the one who started adding Karma to this list and playing this more single tone with a Karma finish. It's very likely that you will draw Karma, by the way. She wins games more times than she should. Uh, but it's the same list that you've always seen around. Just a bit more towards the combo with Seraphine and Pursuit of Perfection. So let's go right into the second uh, lineup for this uh, uh, Karun Terra Open Last Chance Qualifier is the most aggressive lineup. I uh, picked the three decks that I think are the most aggressive, despite Elusives being one of the not very good actually in the ranked mode, in the competitive mode. I guess Elusives are one of the best options if you ban Ferryor. We have here the three archetypes that um, are allowed to be aggressive in standard because we don't have that many aggro decks. We have elusives in the way that they can be. Uh, we have Jinx because Jinx is always the best ag aggressive champion. And we have the mid range, the faster mid range based uh, scouts. I'll say that Scouts is much more like a combo-ish deck nowadays. <laughs> Scouts is a combo deck, guys. 
it's a comboish deck, okay? <laughs> it's it's kind of like you play those cards in a like in sequence and you do stuff. Yeah. It's not like playing on the curve deck anymore. Let's see the first elusive deck, which is Timo with Ionia. Which, by the way, is definitely a comboish deck. Okay, you don't play the cards on the curve. You play them all the, all in the same turn because you want to get the most out of the effect. And the Keeper of the Masks, when you summon, give other allies plus one plus zero this round. So you want to uh, play this card with a bunch of other cards in the same turn. Same thing for Navori Longtail, which basically does the same thing. But if you don't play those cards in the same turn, you have burn uh, you have mystic shot blowback and also shock blast to end your games yeah so this is the elusive archetype in standard let's now see the jinx deck in standard this, this jinx deck is a bit more greedy it has a few more expensive units such, such as some treasure and arena promoter and it also brings uh other plus to give you uh that extra spell mana and also a card to discard but in general it's the same archetype that we've seen just without the weapon that was nerfed but otherwise just a dink stack you'll be leveling your jinx and trying to do as much burn damage to the nexus as you can so the last one is scouts despite champion strength uh, was a nerf card it's still very much the same thing you can play this uh, deck pretty well in the standard format i guess it's one of the strongest in the early game if you have the right hand it's pretty much unstoppable you opponent can do much against your small units because they will swarm the board very easily very quickly i would just recommend that if you are facing a heavy spell deck um, focused on removing units such as pnz you can play mage seeker junior with backup it's very important to play mage seeker junior with backup i know for this list you usually want to play on curve but if you are bringing mage seeker junior and you are dropping him you need to be playing him with backup such as form up or any other card such as Spy on Light or something. Right. So you need to play it uh, with backup whenever necessary. Okay, let's go to the third lineup for this Room Terra Open. It's the Control lineup. Control is not a very... It was not a very good archetype in the last standard Room Terra Open, but in this Open, I guess it's more popular because uh, Karma Set actually is one of the best archetypes and we have a lot of more uh, ways to play against strong units with Vengeance that we're gonna see that uh, are placed in those decks all. I would call this lineup the anti Jax Orn lineup. It has all these decks have uh, cards to deal with Jax Orn specifically. Um, and now that midrange is a bit less intense in standard since uh, Champion Strength was nerfed we have a few more options to play the game with control if you like so the first list we're gonna get into is karma sets standard karma set list it's the same list that you've always seen but it has a few options that came with the jenna package that are a bit better for this archetype such as mariam and sunken temple but otherwise it's just the same list as always uh, remember that tag out is one of the best cards in this format right now so you can recall your opponent's cards and pretty much end his pace of, uh, of the game. Same thing for the Conclusive Palm, pretty much the same thing. Yonia is very good against Jax Orn and the whole meta in this time of the year, okay? Uh, the second one is Nasus and Senna, and this one is pretty much the extreme counter for Formidables. It has a few options to deal with Jax Orn as well, such as Armed Acquisitioner is now a card that can deal with weapons, and we have the standard Vengeance and Castigate to deal with wide Jax Orn boards. It's a very good option to deal with those mid-range decks, especially Scouts as well. And I would just uh, say that if you aren't facing a lot of Formidables or Aggro decks, you can take Eradicate out and put something um, better if you'd like something of your taste. Uh, remember that Senna is the start of the deck, so pretty much the secret of this archetype is to understand when she will be played in the board, otherwise you won't be able to play Castigate during your opponent's attacks, and all your spells will be pretty much slow and you pretty much will do nothing 
against your opponent's board, okay? Since control is a struggling archetype, you will struggle playing these decks, but if you master them, you will definitely have a chance against uh, mid-range decks, okay? It's not like the other format we played in the last standard, uh, standard uh, open, where you couldn't even play control in any shape or form. And the last control list is not much a control list, but it has control things in it, such as Vengeance and Soul Harvest Keras, which are control cards, but it's a Nora and Heimerdinger deck focused on the portals. This deck is like Total said, it has a few elements of control, so you have the control package with Vengeance, Quietus, and uh, Soul Harvest, but you also have the value-based cards such as Heimerdinger and Enclatic Collection. This deck's win condition is basically throw a clerical collection to the air and hope you hit something valuable. Um, you win without doing anything most of the time because of the value this card creates. So don't be worried about finding a lethal play or finding a lethal um, win condition in the deck because you may basically be playing a clerical collection and then just going from there. Uh, actually, Nora and Heimer is one of the most popular decks in the grassroots tournaments that are being played during this week free open okay the third lineup for this Runeterra open is the anti-meta lineup we have Galio and Udyr Nar and Dars and Shin Jarvan those three decks are very good against PNZ and also are one of the best choices for you to play against mid-range decks yeah. all these archetypes are very well known so let's head right into it so we can get this over with. Galliard is the standard formidables list. I don't expect it to be very popular, but it is the best option to deal against P and Z because the units are just too tough to remove, including, of course, the Petrocyte Charger. So this is one of the best uh, mid-range lists to play against P and Z. The second one is Nar and Darius, which also is a very good uh, list against P and Z because PNZ has a lot of small units that don't have a lot of life, and because you're playing a lot of overwhelm units, you will do a lot of damage. And also, Elixir of Iron and Sky Splitter are the best choices for you to protect your units against PNZ removals. I would say this list is, uh, has the best answers out of all the meta, so if you're playing this list, you can be conservative with your plays, and you can just answer your opponent's plays, because the answers you have will be much stronger than anything that they can do, so I would just uh, guide you, like, advise you to play this way. The last one is Shen and Jarvan, which is the strongest mid-range lineup uh, against all other mid-ranges, so if you're playing against the mid-range, you're probably gonna uh, win with this deck because barriers are very strong against board-based decks and also Ionia is very good because you have Syncopation, you have Spirit Refugee which you can heal your Nexus and all the units of this deck are very good against PNZ also because they have a lot of health and you can do Ionia stuff to prevent your units to be killed. This archetype is very focused on Shen, so it often loses to itself because you didn't draw Shen or something. So I really recommend you mulligan for Shen as much as you can because he will be the engine that will get your game going throughout these matches. If you hard mulligan for Shen, uh, by the turn 4 you have more than 70% chance to draw your Shen. So it's very worth it to do so if you want to play this deck, okay? Remember that. And the final lineup that we're gonna show is the Adventures lineup. This lineup is for those players who just want to have fun, even though this is the last chance qualifier, so I don't know who wants to do that, but hey, to each their own, okay? So this lineup is focused on bringing you some a bit more fun in this tournament. These are all decks that I would argue are um, surprise attack decks, because they are going to surprise your opponents more often than not. And they are Kao, Zolani, Riven Gwen, and Timutusana Burn. So let's head into the first one, which is Riven Gwen. This archetype, as I mentioned before, is the mighty Fire Spitter archetype. The only card from the variety pack that survived to eternal this video that we're showing you. And it is basically the Draven Vibe archetype, but instead of the champions that were rotated, we are going to Shadow Isles to get the Gwen package and make it 
uh, more cohesive. We also have Riven, which works really well with Hallowed um, stacks, as she doubles them when she levels up. So, yeah, this is the same Vice Raven archetype, but with the standard uh, revision. And also, it's a very popular deck right now in the format. Uh, if you want to play this in ranked mode, I recommend you to do so because this deck is very good in ranked and it's right now one of the most uh, popular, popular decks in the tournaments, in the grassroots tournaments also. Yeah, so let's head into the next one, which Trisana. is Team Ultrasana uh, Noxus. And, and this is a kind of, uh, it's a deck that wants to be the decks of the Eternal that uh, brings the same regions. And also, it's an uh, Enraged Fire Spitter and Might combo deck, uh, but it's more focused on the board deck, it's more focused on the Yordles and Elusives and stuff. We also have Treasure Trash, which is a card that brings a lot of stuff to your hand, so you, if everything goes wrong, you play Treasure Trash and you are good to go again in this matchup. This deck is just basically uh, Poppy Ziggs at home, so if you played a lot of Poppy Ziggs in Eternal, you have this option in Standard. And the last one is Kao Zolani. Uh, we have Fizz and Yumi also in this list. And this is definitely a Yordles list, Yordles list with Zolani. So Yordles buff themselves. Your board will be packed with a lot of Yordles that will just do a lot of damage against your opponent's Nexus. Eventually they will be removed, but when they are removed, your Zolani will grow even bigger and bigger. And then you play your Zolani like 16, 16, 20, 20 in the board and you just win with that big overwhelm unit. I just realized that there are only three units in this list which aren't Yordles, which is Yumi, Kao, and Zolani. And Yumi and Zolani have tags of their own. So yeah, this is very much a Yordles list and it has several win conditions. If you prefer a more focused on elusive win condition, you can bring this Freljord, but that is very much a meta call because if you have a lot of uh, quicksand around the meta, I wouldn't recommend it. I would recommend this list instead because it has several win conditions as you can storm the board you can have an elusive finish with fizz and you can also have zolani bringing you that lethal turn so guys that's it those were the top five lineups for the room tower open last chance qualifier i hope you guys enjoyed and if you want to see more of this content please leave a like and subscribe and leave a comment yeah i'll see you guys on the next video and bye 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 bye